So now we're here with Dr. Lori Hess and licensed vet technician Steve Young, and we're going to do an exam on a snake. So one of the themes that we have here at the Veterinary Center for Birds and Exotics is that we really believe in preventative medicine for all species. Unfortunately, with a lot of reptiles, we hear owners come in and say, I never needed to bring my snake, my turtle, my tortoise, my lizard in because he's never been sick. And what we really believe is that all exotic pets, just like cats and dogs, should have annual examinations. This gives us a chance to not only look at the pet in person and examine the animal from head to toe or from face to tail, as the case may be here with the snake, but also to go over the environmental conditions with the owner, um, what the animal's eating, because all of these things contribute often to problems if they're off in, in the pet's environment and diet. Um, so for the example with this snake, this is a beautiful ball python with a, a pied color. This is actually owned by Steve. And we're going to show you exactly the kinds of things that we do at the center when a snake comes in. What you might expect if you bring your animal in for a checkup. So typically we actually start at the head. And we take a look um, at the eyes. We know that snakes don't have eyelids. Um, they do have coverings over their corneas, over the center of their eye, called spectacles. And spectacles actually become sort of opaque in color when they're about to shed their skin. And they, shed, they should shed off completely. Sometimes they get retained and they stick on there and they can actually layer on top of each other. And that can be a problem for the snake because they can actually get infections below um, the retained spectacle. And sometimes we need to intervene with medications, um, rarely with actual surgery, but most of the time with increased humidity they come off. Um, snakes don't have ears. Um, they do actually sense their environment through vibrations and through their tongue. There it comes out there. Um, she's giving you a good example of her tongue. She's just going to taste her environment. See if she'll do it again for us. We want to look in her mouth and we often will have to use a little, little aid to do that so we can see inside her mouth. She's sort of a pale pink color, a little uh, paler than some of the mammals we see, and you can see that little circle inside the, her mouth right there. That's her airway. That's the opening to her trachea. That's how she breathes, her glottis. And we want to see no mucus, um, no uh, scabbing or anything inside the mouth, inflammation that would indicate an infection. So the head is a very important part of the animal. We actually also look at the little nostrils here. They should be clear. If we see bubbles coming from them, that might indicate a respiratory tract infection. Um, and then we'll move down the animal's body. And often I'll just kind of take the head from Steve, because I think I have to hold. You can hold the rest of the body, because she's going to wiggle away. So she should be active and trying to move through my hands. Um, she should be muscular and tensing her muscles and contracting. Um, if she's limp and lethargic, then that's a sign of uh, a problem, that she's very lethargic and not, not doing well. She has good muscle. You can see and feel her backbone here down the middle, um, but there should be good muscle on either side, and we feel that muscle all the way down her body. I just let her slip through my fingers. Um, all the while, we're looking actually at her skin. It should be very soft and pliable. There shouldn't be lumps or bumps or scabs or bruises or any discoloration. She's easy to look at because she is mostly white, so we see anything that, that would be out of the ordinary, we would see easily on her. She's curling up because she's a ball python, and that's what they do. They ball up pretty neat, makes it a little harder for her to be examined, um, but then I'll actually ask Steve to hold on again. I'll take oh, the tips of my fingers and I'll actually run them um, on her underside, okay, and we'll just kind of slide, she doesn't love that, we'll slide gently down the underside all the way down the length of her body. And what I'm doing here is I'm actually feeling for any kind of lumps or bumps or swellings. Now if she just ate, I might feel uh, a rodent in here passing through and it can take several days for them to actually digest and fully pass the rodent through their body. Um, while we're talking about that, if you're going to have a snake, you have to be ready to feed some kind of rodent depending upon the size of the snake. Um, they do eat rodents and we are not fans of feeding uh, live rodents because they can actually bite the animal if, if the snake is not paying attention. So we really want to feed uh, frozen and thawed uh, rodents, that's the safest way to do it. Um, she feels really smooth and good. I don't see any discoloration or um, pinkness on the bottom of her, her belly here. And if she had that, I might be thinking of an infection. Um, while we have her on her back, we can see her vent. This is the, the opening where she passes her stool and her urine. Um, and it should be clean and clear with no discolorations, no swellings. Um, and her tail should be very mobile. She should have control over it too. It shouldn't just be hanging limply. I mean, the snake looks beautiful. Um, she's in great condition. Steve actually breeds snakes, so we actually uh, see some great examples of snakes when he brings them in. So this is a perfect example of a very well cared for snake. 
And even though this is a well cared for snake, um, Steve does bring them in for checkups, as every reptile owner should, because the goal is for preventative medicine. I mean, one of the things that we do is we always check stool once a year, because these animals are actually eating rodents that can be carrying parasites, and the parasites can live in them, you know, without harm for a while, but if they get out of control, they actually will compete for nutrients um, with the snake with the reptile. So once a year we check a fresh stool sample and if we see a lot of parasites that are a problem, we will give them some liquid medication via a tube, dewormer to get rid of them. Um, other than that, just focusing on the, the diet and the environment, the heat, the light, um, the environmental setup is really important in snakes. So if you bring your reptile to the center, this is just the kind of thing we'll go over with you to make sure that your pet stays happy and healthy. Hopefully.